Hi, I'm Donald McIntyre, founder of Etherplan. I research, write articles and podcasts about Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin and decentralized applications. This series is Getting Started with Ethereum Classic, Section Security. I'm going to read the article Why Proof of Stake is Less Secure Than Proof of Work. This is episode 26 of 50. Why Proof of Stake is Less Secure Than Proof of Work. A proof of work POW based Nakamoto consensus blockchain as Ethereum Classic ETC is a subjective system of accounts, balances and smart contracts anchored on top of an objective physical base that uses large amounts of energy to produce blocks of data which are subsequently added to a highly secure chain of blocks in the system. By making this anchoring, the subjective layer acquires orders of magnitude more objectivity, thus security, than if it were not connected to a proof-of-work physical base. In search of scalability, proof-of-stake POS systems remove the computationally unscalable proof-of-work physical base, making their systems highly subjective again. Because of the above, I think the correct name of proof of stake systems is proof of stake distributed ledgers, as they are not systems that expend large amounts of energy to build and secure blocks of data. In fact, the reason they create batches of transactions, transaction data and link them as if they were blockchains is just an appeal to authority by mimicking real blockchain design but that serves no purpose in increasing or decreasing objectivity, thus security, in distributed ledgers. What I call subjective, uh, what I call the subjective section in these systems shared by both blockchains and distributed ledgers is basically where the useful features and functionality reside. As seen in the diagram above, the components of the subjective section are the ledger with accounts and balances of the native to token, the EVM, Ethereum virtual machine, when applicable, a programming language, and smart contracts. On top of these go the decentralized applications, dApps, other applications such as IoT, and higher level scaling solutions such as channels and sidechains. I call the subjective section in blockchains and distributed ledgers a community fiat token and system as an analogy to fiat monetary systems, but instead of managed by governments or central banks, they are managed by their eco ecosystems. In other words, all the rules, balances, smart contracts and applications can be changed if agreed upon by the participants. However, the brilliant invention by Satoshi Nakamoto was to anchor these subjective, thus insecure systems to an objective physical base. Without that, without that anchor, proof of stake distributed ledgers basically become traditional subjective, subjectively managed systems again. It doesn't matter what complex designs and choices they do, for example, federations, elected block producers, rotating validators, bakers, pools, epoch slots, voting, quadra quadratic voting, liquid democracy, slashing, treasuries, or any combination thereof, because in the end, it all depends on subjective human incentives, not on any other form of objective security. Summary of features and differences. To illustrate, why a proof-of-work objective anchor is more secure than proof-of-stake, it is worth reviewing the differences between the systems on a feature-by-feature -feature basis. Fault tolerance. Fault tolerance is the amount of nodes in a distributed network who can disrupt the system if they are dishonest by sending corrupt information to other peers. Before Bitcoin, distributed systems achieved 33% fault tolerance. Proof-of-work introduced by Bitcoin has a fault tolerance of 50%. It is worth mentioning Bitcoin did not really solve the standard fault tolerance problem to achieve this level of security, but really bypassed it by creating an external physical signal miner sent to the nodes in the network. Proof of stake by removing proof of work remains a 33% fault tolerance system. 
Fork choice. The fork choice is the decision rule network par participants have to use when presented with more than one chain when it splits. When they join for the first time or when they leave and join again. As an external physical signal, proof of work enables a clear objective fork choice in the form of the longest proof of work chain. It is objective because only with the computing power of the whole network is that the longest chain can be, can be established. As proof of stake systems don't count with such an objective quantity to decide the correct chain, they have to use a subjective decision making process by their participants. This means they need to consult off-chain with block explorers, developers, miners, or other sources to be able to decide what chain to follow. This applies, in case of splits, to, partic to participating nodes in the network, new entrants, and nodes who leave and join again. Unforgeable costliness. One of the basic physical features of sound money is that it is very costly to produce to guarantee it it can't be forged. Proof of work provides this costliness of the tokens as miners incur in huge costs in, that, in data centers and electricity to be able to build blocks. This makes proof of work tokens as ETC and BTC unforgeable in practice. In proof of stake systems, because the database with accounts and balances is trivial to write by nodes and stakers, in the system, there is no objective costliness. Proxy for value. The costliness and proof of work mentioned in the point above also serves as a proxy for, va for the value of the tokens in the broader economy. In proof of stake systems, this feature is not present, so their tokens have no objective measure of value. Accumulated work. As miners and proof of work blockchains do not on a block by block basis, um, do work on a block by block basis, that work is not only a barrier for dishonest nodes to tamper with the current or latest blocks, but that work actually accumulates as the, as the chain is built. This means blocks that are buried further away in the chain become ex exponentially more difficult for attackers to change or forge. For example, at the time of this writing, it would take 340 days with 100% of the current hashing power in the network to be able to reverse the, the entire chain. In proof of stake distributed ledgers, because they don't use proof of work, to reverse the entire chain is trivial in terms of computational work, so it can be done in a few minutes. Block creator location. As mentioned above, in proof of work, mining is an external process to the network of nodes who hold the ledger with accounts, balances, and smart contracts. This separates the ledger from the block creators, which gives the network of full nodes several benefits of security in their independence. In proof of, in proof of stake, as the stakers can only participate if they actually have deposits in the ledger, that makes them internal to the database. Therefore, all the other nodes in the network who maintain the ledger cannot be independent from block creators. Division of power. The previous point is extremely important in terms of security because in proof of work, full node operators who also maintain the ledger can delink from block creators if they become corrupt or dysfunctional to the network. In proof of stake systems, that is impossible. They are stuck with the stakers, making the distributed ledger not censorship resistant. Sunk investment. In proof of, in proof of, work, in proof of work systems, miners have real stake in the system as they actually use capital to buy very costly equipment, build data centers, and buy electricity to produce blocks. This means that once they sink capital, the only way to recover it is to actually mine on the chain to be able to recover it with a profit. In proof of stake systems, stakers actually uh, are actually not stakers because they sink no capital, nor convert capital into any form of risky investment. They just move cash 
from a bank into a distributed ledger and continue earning interest for a trivial activity. Cash is not investment. It is just uninvested capital that is running no risk whatsoever. Full replication. The other fundamental security design of secure blockchains is the full replication of the database. This means that the ledger is more secure as it is copied in as many nodes globally in the network as possible. Several proof of stake networks such as Ethereum 2.0 and Cardano in their search for higher scalability are mi migrating from a replicated format to a fragmented database through sharding. This strategy further reduces security in those distributed ledgers. Fall back to Bitgold. As it is illustrated in the first image in this article above, proof of work based systems are a variation of a system created by Nick Sabo called Bitgold. That system uses proof of work to have unforgeable costliness to produce digital gold in the system and does not have an arbitrarily determined token as ETC or BTC. It can be said that proof of work blockchains are bit gold but with a ledger, token, and the other components on top. This is important because if, if the fee system in these networks happens to fail as a compensation mechanism for miners, or if the ecosystem, however unlikely, decides to modify the monetary policy to issue more tokens irresponsibly, then these systems can fall back and convert their tokens into bit gold and continue building digi digital gold perpetually, as was the original design. Proof of stake systems, by eliminating the proof of work physical base, have entirely discarded this possibility. Socially scalable. <clears throat> Social scalability is determined by the fact a system is objective so that no one can be excluded from participating or using the system for any human condition or bias. As proof of work blockchains are highly objective, they are socially scalable on a planetary scale. <clears throat> proof, of proof, of proof of stake systems will likely evolve to have very few stakers who control the system in practice. Those stakers will be easily identifiable and will be either pressured or by personal or institutional conviction will have a bias to exclude participants uh, to their or, uh, due to their origin, identity, activities, nationality or other conditions just like traditional systems do today. <clears throat> As proof of stake systems are subjective, which is the basis for a lack of social scale which is the basis for a lack of social scalability, they will be confined and restricted to certain segments or regions, very similar to traditional systems today. Computationally scalable. This is the main feature that makes proof of work less performant and proof of stake systems very useful, perhaps in combination with proof of work systems. As proof of work requires a lot of work in the form of computations, their blocks can only be created every 15 seconds to 10 minutes. They also have some other physical restrictions in terms of local processing and global propagation. This makes proof of work computationally unscalable as compared to proof of stake. The six proof of stake fallacies. <clears throat> Given the above comparisons of the two systems, but the public narratives that proof of stake proponents have made popular, there are six proof of stake fallacies that need to be clarified and debunked. The sleeping with the enemy is fine fallacy. Mining and proof of work is external, but stakers and proof of stake are inside the ledger. In other words, full nodes cannot get rid of stakers in proof of stake systems, even if they split. This means proof of stake is not censorship resistant and censors cannot be evicted. Sleeping with the enemy is not fine. 2. The staking is sunk investment fallacy. There is really no, sunk, uh, uh, no such thing as staking in proof of stake. It's just a group of trusted rich participants controlling the system. Miners are, in fact, real stakers because they do sink capital in equipment, data centers and electricity and can only recover their investments after mining for months, if not years. 3. 
the computer science innovation fallacy. Proof of stake is just a community of a community fiat system or subjective traditional governance system. There is no innovation whatsoever and no computer science breakthrough in any way. In fact, the central banking model is, in practice, a proof of stake system. Participating banks have to make security deposits, have minimal capital requirements, and follow the rules to be licensed to accept and process transactions, maintaining the account balances of their customers. Proof of stake is no different. Four, the distributed ledger is blockchain fallacy. Proof of stake networks mimic the structure and processes of uh, real blockchains as an appeal to authority, but are just distributed ledger networks. They are not blockchains. Blockchains are systems with expensive machines and energy investment to do incredible computing and proof of work to build very costly blocks. Proof of stake networks are trivial and cheap to run. Five, the mathematical gimmicks fallacy. Many proof of stake projects design highly complex mathematical models and algorithms to compensate for the lack of security of their systems, giving the impression of an appeal, uh, uh, the impression of and appealing to high academic prowess, but just hiding centralization and gaining nothing in marginal security other than the base standard Byzantine fault tolerance of 33%. Six, the voting, the voting gimmicks fallacy. Many proof of stake projects invent voting mechanisms to compensate for their insecure models by appealing to the authority of democracy, balance of power, and basic guarantees in traditional systems. But that is no innovation and is insecure. True blockchains seek to precisely avoid those systems and decision-making processes in the first place. Voting is the worst mechanism to make technical decisions in blockchains. It is just a conflict minimization de device, but does not guarantee in any way permissionless nor sound engineering choices. And conflict is actually good in blockchain ungovernance systems. Conclusion. <clears throat> there are many reasons why proof of stake is less secure than proof of work. Very likely many more reasons than explained in this article. Furthermore, proof of stake systems should be better called non-proof-of-work distributed ledgers because they don't even have true staking in the system. However, proof of stake is better than traditional systems uh, as they have some additional level, levels of distribution of power and are more diverse jurisdictionally. It could be said they lay somewhere in the middle in terms of security and social scalability between proof of work and traditional fiat system, systems, but much closer to fiat systems than proof of work. If proof of work based blockchains are combined, subjective and objective systems, this model could actually be extended to, to, pro to proof of stake distributed ledgers, which could, you, which could be anchored to existing proof-of-work blockchains to, ga to gain higher levels of security. Thank you very much.